taking a little bit of a stroll into the forest today because we're testing out the DJI Ronin 40 8K sensor. <laughs> It is incredibly cold outside today, but I got a friend with me. You probably recognize him from a previous video. You guys remember Tommy, right? Head over to his channel, subscribe. He's a great dude. He's gonna go full force on YouTube now. He told me. Tommy. Hey. 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 How's the YouTube channel going? It's going very good. It is? At huh? being stable. Yeah. So when you say stable, it's, it's, it, it, it has begun, right? Yeah. begun like a year ago and it's been stable since then. <laughs> stable with nothing. <laughs> As you probably know, I've been using the FX6 for a little bit over a year now and it is a freaking amazing camera, but 8K, how good is that? That is what we're gonna find out in this video. I just wanna say a huge thank you to DJI for sponsoring this video and letting me play around with the 8K sensor for the Ronin 4D. I think that one of the biggest questions that you might have right now is, is 8K worth it when we just have gotten used to 4K? Now, I'm probably not the best person to answer this question, but I gotta say that I'm impressed. And I think that whenever I'm impressed, that's a good thing because then we know that innovation and the development of camera image quality is going in the right way. Could you imagine if I were to look at the images and be like, eh, <laughs> that'd be fun. But during the time that me and Tommy was in the forest to test this out, I actually was blown away by how good the 8K looked when I was playing back the different clips. And I think that being able to have the possibility to actually crop in when you jump into the editing process is something that is a huge win for the 8K sensor. And that is something that I felt has been lacking when I've been shooting in 4K because all my videos for the last four years has been shot in 4K. And when you start to crop in in 4K, you can absolutely notice that you do lack a bit of quality if you crop in too tight. And that is something that you honestly don't really notice when you're cropping in on the 8K unless you're at, like zooming in. Oh! Another thing that I think is freaking amazing is the possibility to shoot internal raw with this camera. 8K, 75 FPS, ProRes raw, and there's no crop in 8K. And when you go to 4K, 120, no crop. One of the biggest downsides when you're shooting in 8K though, mm -hmm. storage, as they say in France. Now, I don't know if they do, but storage, that is wild. I think we went out to shoot for approximately 20 minutes total and we shot most of it in 50 FPS, 8K, ProRes RAW and that filled up one terabyte of storage. <laughs> and it's completely bonkers if you think about it that we're moving into a direction we have that much data stored on those few minutes that I was actually able to shoot. And the question that I asked myself, is it actually worth to shoot in RAW? And I'm gonna say both yes and no. Luckily enough, you have different codecs that you can choose from when you're shooting with a 4D, so you don't have to shoot everything in RAW. But when you jump into the editing process and having the ability to change the white balance and the ISO is something that I think is a huge, huge win. Because sometimes you just need to get the shot. You don't have time to manage to get the perfect exposure every single time around. And that is where shooting in RAW comes in handy. You just bring out the camera, hit record, and you're good to go. You don't, like everything else you can just think of when you jump into the editing process. When it comes to the dynamic range with the 4D, it 
actually performed incredibly well when we were shooting towards the sun to be able to get those nice looking sun flares. But if you look at the non-graded, like the straight up log footage, you can see that it's very flat. And there's a lot of different details in both the shadows, but also the highlights. And the cool thing here is that I think we shot most of this at ISO 1600. And when you're shooting without the extended mode, the native ISO is 320 and 1600. But when you use the dynamic range expansion, then the native ISO is 800 and 4000, which means that you can shoot in some low light environments with this without actually having too much noise. And what would a video be if we didn't take Optimus out for a spin? Well, Some of the differences between the 6K and the 8K version is, for example, that when you're shooting in 4K 120 with the 6K version, you are using a Super 35 crop, which means that you're not utilizing the entire full frame sensor. When you're shooting in 4K 120 on the 8K version, there's no crop. And the same thing goes for when you're shooting in 8K 30 FPS, no crop, 8K 60 FPS, still no crop and you also have two different native iso on the 8k version which is the 320 and 1600 iso and then when you go up to the extended mode you have 804,000. but on the 6k version the only native iso that you got is the 805,000. both of these sensors are incredibly good and the 6k version is something that i've been using for the last two years but you do have a little bit more dynamic range on the 8k version as well than what you got on the 6K. One of the coolest things, in my opinion, with this entire camera system is that you can actually remove not only the lens, but the entire lens mount. See that we can just replace it with the, you know, Sony E mount, for example, if you want to do that. You can also use the Lumix L mount or just stick with the DL mount that you got on the Inspire and the Ronin 4D. I guess you can say that this is basically the same kind of camera and sensor that you got in the Inspire 3. But in this unit, you have the built-in ND filters that covers nine stops of ND, which is basically everything that you might need. Anything else than that, it's just going to be like filming straight into the sun. So being able to switch out the entire mount means that all the lenses that I already got for my Sony FX6 is actually possible to use on the 4D with the LiDAR autofocus as well. I really do like the fact that DJI is pushing the boundaries with their cameras and with their products, enabling us as creators to be able to use new pieces of tech for our content creation. If you've seen my latest videos, you probably have seen when I went up uh, northern parts of Sweden to shoot sort of like a commercial of the Ram TRX. That is something that I shot with the Ronin 4D and the Flex, uh, what is it called? Like the Ronin 4D Flex, which is basically just taking this unit and putting the entire thing in the backpack, shooting a video with that, being able to utilize the 8K sensor in a smaller four factor and just have the camera brain in your backpack. I think of that, like, there's so many cool things about this. 
that makes it so unique. If you think about the value that you get with the Ronin 40, you have like the 8K sensor or the 6K sensor, and they have a built-in gimbal. You also have the possibility to use a transmission tool. You have a built-in Z-axis gimbal. You have the possibility to shoot raw. You're shooting directly to SSDs, which means that you can just plug and play into your computer. That is something that you cannot do directly with the FX6 unless you actually get a gimbal and an external recorder. I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about 8K footage and 8K coming to cameras? Is it something that you want to use for your future videos or is it not? Drop a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I would love to see you in the next video. Peter from Sweden saying goodbye.